In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a new day. We thank God for the gift of life and for bringing us to this new day. Today is Wednesday, the 21st of December, 2022. It is Wednesday of the fourth and last week of Advent, Church Year A. Good morning, God's beloved people, and welcome. This is Catholic Meditation. I am your preacher, Father Blessed Amban Njume. Let us pray. Hear in kindness, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in our flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, gain the reward of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading has an option, either from the book of the Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 8 to 14, or from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 33. The response to the psalm is, Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, O sing him a song that is new. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. I read from the Gospel. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Bring joy to others when you visit them. Bring joy to others when you visit them. Dear friends in Christ, we are in the climax week before the nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in the course of this week, events leading to the birth of Jesus are recounted. Yesterday, we remember, it was the story of the Annunciation scene. The archangel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she was to conceive a son by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary, as young as she was, she gave her total yes to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your will. Even when she did not understand, yet she trusted. Today, we are told of the scene of the visitation. Mary, after hearing the words of the archangel Gabriel, goes to visit Elizabeth. We recall that the archangel, after telling Mary that she was to conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit, to ascertain that nothing is impossible for God, the archangel told Mary, your kinswoman, Elizabeth, has herself in her old age conceived a son, and she 
who was called barren, is in her sixth month. Immediately, the angel left Mary. We are told today she left with haste to go visit Elizabeth. Dear good people of God, we might have been listening to these stories and we might not take time to read in between the lines to understand what took place and to bring out the strong meaning. It may just be normal. Well, Mary went to visit Elizabeth. But what was the context, beloved? Remember that Mary had just received the message from an angel. She was still contemplating, yet she left to visit Elizabeth. The very first lesson we learn is Mary's selflessness. She forgot about herself and ran to visit Elizabeth. Of course, the angel had told her that Elizabeth was in the sixth month of her pregnancy, meaning it was already in the advanced stage. Mary forgot about herself and went to offer help to Elizabeth. And we are told she stayed with Elizabeth until she had her child meaning she spent three months with Elizabeth. Dear good people of God, who will receive such great news from the angel and forget about herself and go to visit another? Who had the greater news, if we may ask? It was Mary. She was to conceive and bear the Son of God. Yet, she humbled herself, forgot about herself, and went to visit Elizabeth. Elizabeth herself is surprised. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? Of course, it should be the other way around. It should be Elizabeth running to visit Mary, for Mary had received the greater news. But Mary forgot about herself, forgot about the great news she had received. It was she to bring forth the Savior. Elizabeth should come to visit her, but Mary went to visit Elizabeth. What humility, what selflessness. Imagine that you receive such great news. I don't know of what magnitude, but imagine that you were told you have had a visa to travel abroad or you have been appointed to some high office and your sister or brother receives news that their children have passed an examination, be it first living certificate, you have received greater news, I guess, if we were to compare the gravity or the magnitude. But that you forget about your own important news to visit your brother or sister who has received news but of a lesser magnitude than yours. Beloved, this is selflessness on the part of Mary. Why then should we not honor such a woman who forgets about self? Given a normal human society, some will beat their breasts and say, it is they to come and visit me. After all, I am the great one. I have received the greater news. But Mary left in haste to go visit Elizabeth. Second lesson to learn, beloved. We should share in the joys of others. Do not be jealous or envious. Mary goes to visit Elizabeth to share in her joy. Elizabeth had been longing for a child. And look at when it came. Mary left to go share in the joy of Elizabeth. We are getting very close to Christmas time, a time of joy, a time of celebration. Do we share in the joys of others or are we envious and jealous? No wonder. When you hear the good news that has happened to others, you begin to play the devil's advocate. Is that anything? Is that any news? What about me? I received greater news and I did nothing. They are making as if the whole world has ended. Beloved, that is being jealous. That is being envious. Share in the joys of others. If you have no child and you hear that your neighbor has given birth to a child, would you go to share in their joy or would you feel that it would have been you? When you hear that others have had success in an examination or have been appointed do you go to share in their joy or do you stay away? When you hear that others are getting married, do you go to share in their joy or do you stay away? 
Beloved, a human society is characterized by jealousy and envy. People will not like to share in your joy. They will rather struggle to bring you down. When you hear that your neighbor or a friend has bought a new car, do you share in their joy or do you get envious and jealous? When you hear that they have been awarded or rewarded for something, do you share in their joy or do you get envious and jealous? When a priest has been appointed bishop, do you share in their joy or do you get envious and jealous? Beloved, let us learn from Mary. Share in the joys of others, for it is in sharing in the joys of others that joy will also be given to you. In today's readings, they all talk about joy. The first reading talks of the voice of the beloved that brings joy to the one who listens. The voice of the beloved brings joy. And the psalm says, Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just. We should be joyful, for Christ brings joy, and we must share that joy to others. When you go to visit people, do you bring joy to them, or do you bring sorrow and sadness? When people are around you, are they happy and joyful, or do you bring tears and sorrow? Some of us are those kinds of people. When you come around, we already begin to change our channels from joyful mysteries to sorrowful mysteries because you are around. You should rather be that kind of a person who, when you are around, people change their channels from sorrowful mysteries to glorious mysteries and joyful mysteries. Bring joy to others when you visit them. In today's gospel episode, it was a meeting of two women, Mary and Elizabeth. An encounter of two children, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. One brings joy to the other. Mary brings joy to Elizabeth. Her heart was filled with joy. And Jesus brings joy to John the Baptist. John the Baptist leaped for joy as soon as the words of Mary's greeting reached the ears of Elizabeth. Dear friends in Christ, this is the time to bring Jesus to others. Mary took Jesus to the home of Elizabeth. Bring Jesus to others. Bring joy to them. Let us carry Jesus everywhere we go, like Mary carried Jesus to Elizabeth and to John the Baptist. Let people see you and rejoice because of the Jesus whom you carry. Do not be a bringer of bad news, of gossip. Do not be a bringer of sorrow, rather be a bringer of joy. Let people rejoice and sing for joy at your presence. Like in the first reading, let your voice be that voice that brings joy and happiness. Let us pray for that grace that we may be carriers of Jesus wherever we go. Bring Jesus into the homes of people. They need Jesus, beloved. Bring Jesus to them. Bring Jesus to your co-workers wherever you work. Bring joy to people and not sorrow. Let people not see you and run away. Rather, let them see you and cling unto you because you bring joy. Fathers, bring joy to your homes. Mothers, bring joy to your homes. Children, bring joy to your parents. Parents, bring joy to your children. Let us pray that we may be carriers of joy, carriers of Jesus Christ wherever we go, so that those who encounter us, like Elizabeth encountered Mary, like John the Baptist encountered Jesus, they may be filled with joy. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.